The idea behind Art of Ginesta was actually sprung out of a need, a personal need that I felt and, and my colleagues felt because after years and years of, of education, when you've been at the academy for like six years, some of us, we, we felt uh, that it was a void that we were walking into after finished uh, uh, like ended master program. We were afraid that uh, we would uh, that it would not be enough uh, platforms for us to to in depth work with our practice, and some of us were were interested in uh, staying in this context that we're in here, which is uh, not situated in a central uh, big city. We chose to be close to other contexts such as uh, uh, this village context, the farmer context, the na nature and so on and so forth. So we, we wanted to bring that pulse and that possibility of, of uh, real professional work but st still stay in this context. So we started to look at uh, how this would be possible. And, of course, in the beginning we thought a lot about like uh, atelier studio spaces and so on, but while we were looking at how to make this possible, the project became more complex. For example, we, we saw that research, the research phase is uh, equally important than the production phase, and we saw that, well, we need for uh, the artists to be able to live uh, for a period of time to enable the process to be as productive and, and, uh, and deep as possible. So we started to look at that and that's how the residency program became an issue and we, we wanted to do that. Mm -hmm. So Art Lab Ginesta is uh, a production space uh, a space for, for critical thinking in terms of society but also art practice like different projects where we can discuss issues in art and society from this global perspective because of us being situated where we are it, it becomes a different context to discuss these matters mm -hmm. Ginesta is an old, old train uh, village, a place where they used to fill up the trains with water because we're situated just beside a lake, the lake of Fresha. Uh, and I think that because this is like the end station of the commuter train to Stockholm, uh, it also is like, it's a, I see it almost like a, a a bridge or a door between like some kind of urban <laughs> urban life and a very different life where you are uh, not cut off but at least you have peace that you don't really find in, uh, in uh, big cities. So Gnesta has uh, 5,500 people living in the village and 10,000 uh, in the municipality. It is a municipality that, has, uh, as, as a municipality, is pretty young, it's only 25 years old. It's politically run, so we have a, a municipality structure that are run by our political board. Uh, and yeah, we don't really have, um, we have schools of course and so on, but we don't have a lot of activities for uh, this group between 15, 16 and uh, adults. We don't have a high school here, um, so all young people they go somewhere else to go to. Uh, is it college or high school? It's an interesting place in that sense, that it is like a door between two worlds. Mm. 
I think it affects us in many ways. I think it affects us in that way that we are we have the possibility to give time, space to uh, both like artistic process, but also our exhibition program, the resident artists, the dialogues that we that we uh, uh, that that we run our magazine like everything can be done in a different pace in one way it's more efficient and much faster because we are flexible we're a very small institution with a, a tight board so our decisions can be taken uh, more rapid than our colleagues in bigger institutions but also it can take more time like because we we have this this great house, so we can give time. We don't. We don't have to stress the processes. So it's being located where we are. Also, uh, really, it, it becomes us. It um, that framework is really uh, important to us, and has become more and more of a, of a method. In the beginning, we didn't really see the pros and cons of being in Genesta. We are now one hour south of Stockholm, so. But throughout the years, it we we are looking at it, and and it has become some somewhat of a method. This possibility of uh, uh, allowing processes to to take a long time, and when it's needed to be really quick, uh, if that is needed, mm -hmm. if somebody needs to to make an enormous hole in the wall, yeah, go on and do it. Or if you need to build something and, or change the house or the contents of our practice, we, are, we try to be flexible in that way because it's also an interesting method to, to let artists that come to us affect what we do and so on. So it's maybe fragile, but it has, it's a very interesting um, practice. Well, I, I find that it's all a matter of perspective, that uh, being remote uh, is something that I really don't recognize in myself or in my practice at ArtLab Ginesta. I don't see ArtLab Ginesta as remote because geographically, of course, we are, we are less uh, centered in a city than, for example, <laughs> our colleagues in Stockholm, but this was by choice. We chose to be so, because this context and this location uh, had something else to offer. So, and also like, it's a, com it's a complicated um, thing, remoteness, because, as I said, I think it's a matter of perspective. But we also have, we have the tools to not be remote, because we are in a society where we are, uh, we have uh, our voice can be heard. So, if I have colleagues in other countries with other political structures and hinders uh, that hinders their their work, that must that of course can be uh, you can be remote in central Belgrade, but we are not remote in Genesta. Uh, we are uh, a few hours away for, from anywhere in Europe and we are one click away from any dialogue with any partner so uh, and i am free like art lab is a free uh, place so we can be heard and where we need to and if that is the case then you are not remote it's important to to understand that the context that we are in of Ginesta is one thing but the other context is of course that we chose to to this, this house we're in, which was enabled by an old man that bought us this house, we chose to leave trace of the people uh, that was here before us. We chose to leave trace of, of him in our residency program. So you move into his sheets and his porcelain and his furniture and his books and so on when you move into our re residency program. But also this is what we are trying to do with the processes that we enable in this house that we, we choose to leave trace behind because uh, that changes us, like it's not, 
so the different processes in the house also changes how we uh, proceed with our practice at Art Lab Ginesta. A very good example right now is like this summer we had a resident artist here for five weeks to be a Spanish troupe. He's working with sound and music in his art. And he, he saw something, a possibility in the house and started to work with an idea and what we can do is to try to catch that and enable that and kind of include that in our plans for the future so that his project can, can trace us, like leave trace at Art Lab Gidesta. So like st stains and traces are all over this place, personal uh, and also, but also by, uh, you know, uh, the questions that we raise such as environmental issues and so on. Our toilet is an environmental toilet that composts your shit. It's a part of a discussion, it's a part of a, a raising a debate. So it kind of, it's interesting how, how, like, how rapid uh, this very small institution has been in, in, in being some kind of hybrid, becoming a hybrid. Uh, also like physically, now in the backyard, we built a wall between the residenting house and the Art Lab Ginesta because we needed the wall there and so now there's a wall. It just kind of happens because one of the projects needed a wall. And I don't know, it's, I really like this, um, this changing uh, method of it's almost like an animal or like a being. It has its own will, where the different processes in the house kind of take space and it breeds and then it disappears and it degrades and then it grows stronger again. It's, mm. yeah, it's like a, it's like a, a, a live hybrid. Mm. <laughs> organic process. It's an organic yeah. process. Mm. And of course the difficulty with that is of course that sometimes change is, is difficult and sometimes being organic is extremely uh, painful because some of the changes in the house may not be to, for uh, you know uh, not not even good changes and then trusting the method of like being flexible but also staying professional because when we work with art and artists we want to, to do it in the best uh, in the best professional way so that being flexible and being professional at the same time, that is really the, the, the task at hand here. It started again from the need of giving, like, giving space and possibility to process and production. So, uh, in 2010, when we, when we first started, it, was, it became clear very early on that to, to, to be able to, to, to give space to the process and the needs of the artist, we need to give a, a, a space to live. So it was just logic. But we didn't have any space and it was not allowed, of course, to sleep here in this old brewery house, which is still under construction in many ways. So we collaborated with an artist uh, by the name Gambat Logiras that was here uh, and we were exhibiting him early on in the process. And he, he um, started the residency program with us, or we started it, but he, he found a way to do it, make it possible, which was to import a yurt from, from his home country. Uh, and uh, we placed it in collaboration with the, our municipality on the uh, nearby island in our lake here. Our idea was to also investigate further this idea of remoteness or even like, you know, this kind of creative uh, bubble that, that you go into as when you are in the middle of a process. So we gave the possibility to art, for artists to live in the yurt, which is how how 
uh, many different cultures they live in, houses which are mobile and houses which are uh, cons constructed in this way, so why, not, why couldn't we? So this yurt was put in a very, very beautiful space in the, in the island and the artist or artists were given the possibility to paddle or row in between their living space at the island and their working space here at Art Lab Gniesta. And it became a very interesting dialogue about like what like what is a good living uh, situation for an artist and what what is support for the process and so on. And we did this together with Cultivator, which was one of the first uh, big uh, artist collaborations we had in the house. And it became an interesting dialogue about uh, yeah living, working, uh, and what is the best way to do that. So after one year, one season, the summer season of artists and residents living like that and working with us, we uh, kind of had time to evaluate like what did we want to give to our artists and, and what we did from the beginning was of course to give them a very very strong context because it's very hard to, to, not, <laughs> to not feel the context if you're sleeping together with, uh, you know, owls and, <laughs> and spiders and so on in a tent on an island. So and we, we liked that, to kind of give, give a, a map of context to the residenting artist. Mm -hmm. So when our enabler uh, got his stroke, uh, this was last year, uh, he kind of uh, moved out of the, the small house that are in our backyard here. And he had all his things there still, his library, everything. So this, this became a natural step for us to, to kind of just take the same concept, but take his life as, as the frame and just say, okay, this is, this is now the context. We just freeze everything, we don't change anything. And as a residenting artist, you're welcome to live in this context. We don't... We don't push you in the direction that you have to work with this in your art, but you can, you are living in a context, for sure. <laughs> so this is uh, how it started, and now we have had about 35 artists visiting our uh, residency program, and they all choose to approach this context in different ways, which is which is the, the purpose, of course.